Hello and welcome back to the Authorpreneur Nuts and Bolts video series for self-published authors. My name is Garrett Robinson and I am the full-time self-published author of the Nightblade series. Today we're going to start talking about Scrivener, currently the best word processing program for writing and self-publishing your book. We believe that if you're not using Scrivener, you're just making life harder on yourself than it needs to be. If you're an aspiring author, there's a very good chance you've already heard of Scrivener. At only 45 bucks, with all of the functionality it provides for planning, writing, formatting your book for ebook and print production, it really is the best investment you can make in your writing career at a cost that like almost anybody can afford. If you don't already have Scrivener but want to buy the software, there are links to purchase it in the description. Those are affiliate links that give us a percentage of the sale, but of course cost you nothing extra. If you choose to buy the software through those links, we cannot thank you enough. Over the next few videos, you'll learn how to organize and write your book within Scrivener, and then later in the Nuts and Bolts series, we'll teach you how to export it into ebook and print formats. But for now, let's look at the first basic organization of a novel with Scrivener. One quick note, all of our Scrivener tutorials will be dealing with Scrivener on the Mac. Scrivener for Windows doesn't have some of the functionalities that the Mac version has, so you might be able to follow the instructions, but there will be some steps you won't be able to follow. If you're having too much trouble with it, you might honestly be better off hiring a professional formatter who works on a Mac. Now let's get into the tutorial. In Scrivener's file menu, you'll have an option to create a new project. Let's do that now. The project provides you with a few basic templates. If you want to build your project from scratch, you can go with the blank option, which doesn't provide you with any template at all. We recommend the fiction template for most authors working on a book. Ignore the novel with parts sub-template. If your book is split into parts, we find it's easier to create them yourself. Similarly, the short story sub-template omits some formatting you'll want if you publish your short story as an ebook. Double click on the novel sub-template or select it and click choose. Select a save location for your book, name it, and click create and the book will open up. Right away we notice a few things. The section of your window on your left is called your binder. The first thing in your binder is an instructional text document explaining how the template works. The next thing in the binder is the master document titled manuscript. That's where you'll write your book. Within that, you'll see a folder called Chapter, and then within that, a text document called Scene. Further down, there are folders for your character sheets, places or locations where your book will take place, front matter, that is, all of the stuff in your book before the book actually starts, like a title page, a dedication, or a foreword, and finally, your research folder. Your research folder is going to be your most important folder when you're planning out your book and will continue to be a reference for you throughout writing and editing the book. Below the research folder, you'll see a folder called Template Sheets. This includes two documents, a character sketch document and a setting sketch document. These are templates for you to use every time you create a new character or location within your book. In time, you'll probably find that you need to expand these templates to include more detail, but we'll go into that in future videos. Finally, there's the trash folder, and this is a great moment to talk about one of Scrivener's greatest features. At any time, you can delete anything in your binder by clicking Command Delete, but the files you trash are never gone. They're always in your trash folder, and they'll stay there until you explicitly go in and tell Scrivener to erase them permanently. That means you'll never accidentally delete parts of your novel and never be able to get them back, as can happen with other word processors. <coughs> word. <coughs> Scrivener also automatically backs itself up every 5 to 10 seconds, so even in a catastrophic computer crash, you'll only have lost a few seconds of work. For now, let's get in some basic organization. You can delete the novel format instructional document at the top. Then, we find it expedient to stick your Characters and Places folder inside your Research folder. Remember, research is where you'll do your book's pre-production. That is, all of the planning, preparation, and outlining before you actually write. Since character and location planning is part of that pre-production, it just makes sense to have everything in one place. The Sample Output folder is just a reference for how your final book should look, so you can delete that by pressing Command-Delete. 
Finally, the subfolders in the front matter folder are helpful, but we'll be creating much, much better versions, so delete those as well. Then create three new subfolders by hitting Command Option N. Label one folder ebook, one folder Smashwords, and one folder print. We'll talk more about how to use those in a future video. There's one more folder you should create for the basic building blocks of your book, and that's the back matter folder. After clicking in the binder, hit Command Option N to create a new folder and name it Back Matter. These are all the pages in your book that come after the story is through, such as an author's note, a request for reviews, and an About the Author page. Within this folder, you should create two subfolders titled Ebook and Print. We'll talk more about these folders in the next video. Now you've got a good looking, if basic, starting point for creating your book. If you already have a title, go ahead and double click on the manuscript folder, then enter your title and press enter. That will be the name of your book. Now we come to a crossroads in this tutorial. Authors organize their chapters differently. Some authors simply create a text document for each chapter and write in it until the chapter is done. Other authors use folders to mark chapters and have a text document for each scene in the book. This allows them to rearrange scenes if they want to as they edit and revise their book. You can use whichever method you prefer. When it comes to exporting the book, we'll teach you how to export with either text chapters or folder chapters. Use whichever method you're comfortable with, because either one will work when it comes time to publish your book. Now that your book is basically organized, you just have to write it. Or if you've already written another book in another word processing program, transfer your text from the other program to your Scrivener file. By the time you're done, you should have all your chapters laid out and ready to export. In the next two videos, we'll go into how to organize your front matter and back matter using Scrivener, and then explain how to use Scrivener collections to further organize your book. That's it for this tutorial. Once again, if you're considering purchasing Scrivener software, we hope you'll consider buying it through the affiliate links in the description below. We can't wait to see you for the next video, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything. And as always, right on.